to understand, to believe, to apply the word in our hearts, and to reach forth unto all the people in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 9. God is faithful, by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, unto it to which is that, called to the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, reading from verse 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, reading from verse 4, says, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gifts and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry to the saints, the fellowship that leads to our ministry to the saints. You see what we read in chapter 1, verse 9, fellowship of the Son. Here we have fellowship of the saints. We're coming to 1 John, chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 3. 1 John, chapter 1, verse 3. That which we have Ce seen, there is an apostle talking, is the servant of Christ. God, that Ce which we have seen, and that declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, us the apostles, us the servants of nous. God, and truly, a fellowship oh, is with the Father, avec le Père and with the avec Son, son fils, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. As you look at those three verses of scriptures we have read, you find the mention of the word fellowship. And it says we are called to fellowship with the Father, with the Son, also with the saints of God, and the servants of God. Tonight, as we look at those verses, we are looking at the divine call to true fellowship. The divine call, He calls us. God calls us. The Father himself calls us, and he calls us to fellowship with his Son. It's a call by God, and it is a command from God. As we have read, we're called to fellowship with the Son, with the saints, and with his servants, the servants of God. One, you can talk about the transforming fellowship with the Son. You come to the Son in repentance. You come to the Son as Savior. You come to the Son and you're in fellowship with Him, relationship with Him. It transforms your life. Transforming fellowship with the Son. The second thing is the true fellowship with the saints. You're brought into the assembly of the children of God. Brought you to the congregation of the saints of God. And as you come into that fellowship and congregation assembly, you are in fellowship with all the believers of like precious faith, like yourself. But then, we fellowship with the servants of God, with the apostles of the Lord, with the preachers of the gospel, with the pastors in the churches. And this is trustworthy fellowship with the servants. We think of fellowship like a two-way traffic. It's not just that you're receiving, you're getting, you're giving. You're responding, you're receiving. You're blessing and you're benefiting. That is, as you have fellowship with the saints, they give to you, you give to them. You get, you give. As you have fellowship with the ministers of God, you're receiving from them, you're responding to them. It's a two-way thing. It's not just that I'm a part of the church, and because I'm a part of the 
church, I've been fellowship with the people, and they're feeding me, they're helping me, and they're taking care of me. And that's what I think is fellowship. Isn't it wonderful when this fellowship, that, you know, when I'm sick, they come to me, they pray with me, and they come to me, they share with me, they come to me, they read the Bible to me, and I've never given anything back. That's not fellowship. Fellowship is a two-way thing. And we think of the Son of God, He's giving us quite a lot of things. And He's giving us everything of God. And if we're in fellowship with Him, we must give something back to Him. We get from Him, we give to Him. The same thing with the saints of God, the saints in the assembly, in the church of the living God, we're getting from them, we're giving unto them. And the same thing with the servants of God, we're getting from them, we're giving unto them. In our fellowship with the Son, look at this, we feed on His Word. That's the F in the fellowship there. We embrace His will. You cannot say you are fellowship with the Son of God, with Jesus Christ, and you don't feed on His Word. That's the basis of the fellowship with Him. And then to embrace His will, to love, that's the N in the fellowship there, we love His Word. We just love that word. It's always speaking, feed us more and more with this word. We learn his ways. Because we're in fellowship with him, he's giving to us, and then we're learning, and we're eager to learn of his ways. We obey his word. That's fellowship. Fellowship with the Lord. Fellowship with Christ. As he's giving to us, as he's teaching us the word, we obey his word. We withdraw from the words. We draw from the wolves because he is the true shepherd and he is the one guiding us and because he's the shepherd we're withdrawing ourselves from the wolves not only that we seek his wisdom this is one wise son of Solomon and wise son and anybody that had ever been and we have his word we have his wisdom in the new testament we're seeking his wisdom each is to help in his work. We fellowship with him. He's giving us, and we're getting, and we have to give something back. We have to consecrate. We have to yield our lives to him. And because of that, we're helping in his work. We increase in his witness. He says, go into all the world and, and preach the gospel to every creature. And, and here we are now, and we're fellowship with him. Therefore, we are witnesses of the Lord. We're increasing the time we give to witnessing. We're increasing the passion we give to witnessing. We increase in his witness. P, we praise his worthiness. His worthy. Worthy to be praised, and it's worthy to receive all glory, all honor, and therefore our lives are spent in praising the Lord. Fellowship with the Son. But now we also fellowship with the saints of God. Here we are in the household of faith. Here we are with the children of God, and it says we fellowship with the saints. We fellowship with the children of God. What does that mean if we forgive and we forbear? Many things will happen in the fellowship. Many things will happen in the congregation. Many things happen between us and the children of God. If we're in true fellowship, we forgive, we forbear. We edify one another. That's fellowship. You edify him. He edifies you. And you're sharing together. You're sharing the word of God together. Testimonies together. Encouragement together. Mixed you to edify one another. And in the fellowship there is that we love one another. We lift up one another. That Jesus is now. Are you able to be up at this time? And therefore, you lift him up. That's part of the fellowship. He's sorrowful. You lift him up. He's discouraged. You lift him up. Anything is happening, a problem in his life, you are lifting him up. You observe, you observe, you observe one observe another. He doesn't have to come and tell you, I'm down, you are observing. I'm sick, you are observing. I'm sorrowful, you are observing. In fellowship, we are not just going our way, you go your way, I go my way. I don't know what's happening to a fellow brother, a fellow sister. We observe one another. We warn one another. A brother is not, you know, being well. Fellowship is not smiling 
all the time. Ce n'est pas à tout moment it's not que just a word. Dieu te bénisse, c'est bon, c'est right. ce qui se passe, ça va. Right. Non, no. no. we one, we one another. un avertit l'un l'autre, yes. we serve en garde. one another. Et we nous servons aussi we serve par l'amour, nous servons serve par l'amour, nous servons par la foi, nous servons l'un serve l'autre. Another. Each, we Et help nous one nous another. nous entraînons. And also, as we think of this, the fellowship, we intercede. We intercede for each other. There are problems, you don't have to be in a prayer warrior to pray for another person. Because of the fellowship, we intercede for one another. We please one another. And maybe you, you didn't understand that before. You think of that before. Let me look at this in Romans chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 1. Pleasing one another. It says in Romans chapter 15 verse 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. In fellowship, we are not thinking of ourselves. This is what I want, this is what I like, this is what I desire, this is the way I want things to go. No, the thinking of the other person, look at us here. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to purification. That's the fellowship we are talking about. You forgive and forbear. You on edify, edify, on you aime, love, you on lift edify, up, on you observe, you want, avertis, you serve, serve you help, aide, you intercede, and et puis you please one another. As we think about fellowship with et comme the saints, there is no fear in fellowship. You see if you fear et, another et person, and there is communion. something going wrong there. And a, a the two-way communication of ouais, the mercy of God, of the love of God, is not flowing freely. There is no fear. Uh, dans la communion, no et il n'y a pas d'envie dans la communion, Hell, il n'y a pas de mensonge dans la communion, on ne ment pas l'autre, nous sommes dans la communion, parce qu'on est dans la communion, il n'y a pas de mensonge dans la communion, il n'y a pas de convoitise, il n'y a pas d'oppression dans la communion, il n'y a pas de combat, il n'y a pas de conflit, il n'y a pas de guerre dans la communion, dans la communion, there is no slander. If you are fellowshipping with somebody, he might tell you something about his life. He might tell you something about his family. He might tell you something about, uh, you know, uh, let's be you need to pray for with me, my sister, because my, my husband is, uh, you know, going this way and that way. And then we don't take that prayer point and then go and tell another person because of fellowship, there's no slander. And then whatever we know of other people, we're not broadcasting that, we're not, uh, you know, Putting that on the net, on the social media, this happened to such and such and such and such, there's no slander. There's no hypocrisy in fellowship. We don't deal with each other hypocritically as if, you know, I love him, but really in my heart, there's no real love and there's no ill will. Ill will is ill feeling. Il oui, les filles ont some secret hatred there, and then there is no pride. We're talking about fellowship among the saints, and there's no fear, there's no envy, there's no lying, there's no lust, there's no oppression, there's no warfare, there's no slander, there's no hypocrisy, there's no ill will, there's no pride. Now, as we think about fellowship with the servants saints, of God, when I want to talk of servants of God, Dieu, I think you need to now reset your mind. Because sometimes, when we say, Pastor, Pastor, they're referring to Jesus almost all the time. You understand, you have a local pastor there in your district, and he's a servant of God, and you need to be in fellowship with him. And then we have in uh, you know, the city, we have a group pastors, and the group pastors, uh, our district pastors are looking up to the group pastors, all our workers are looking up to the group pastors, all our members are looking up to the pastors, to the group pastors in that group. And so as we refer to the servant of God, we're referring to those leaders over us. If we're in the region, the region of us here is a pastor there, is a pastor over the whole region. Of course, we are pastors over 
over the local government. So, we're not referring to just one person now in the church that somebody is always referring to pray for the pastor, pray for the pastor. That's all right. And he's also a pastor. And everything we're talking about now, this applies to the leaders and our sisters, to our mothers in the Lord, and also pastors in this sense we're talking about now, because they are the handmaids of the Lord and the servants of the Lord. And they are watching over a group of people in a children church too. The same thing, the servants of God were referring to, those are servants of God, all those young people, those children, the youth section, the campus section, every section, among our ushers and among our security and the choir and floating workers, and those are being one thing or the other, we are servants of God over us. And what the Lord is saying is that we should have fellowship with the servants of God. And because this idea is not a clear to many, many people, I'm going to now read the scripture so that you understand. The fellowship we're talking about, we may know the Greek. Somebody says that the Greek word is kononia. I hear you. Somebody says that fellowship means that you know, there is unity. I hear you. Somebody says there's humility in fellowship. I hear you. All that is true. How do we have the items of the fellowship that I will know that you are in fellowship with me, I'm in fellowship with you, and that your leader will know in the locality there that you are in fellowship with me. We follow him. We follow that leader. You know, if you have a leader, you, like a group pastor that taught tonight, is a servant of God. And in his group, maybe you never have any relationship with him. And you don't even know his pattern of life. And you don't know his understanding. You don't know his expectation. So you cannot say you're in fellowship with him. You can stand on the pulpit here and talk to him. But you don't know what he wants. You don't know what he desires to follow, you follow that leader, that's the very beginning of that fellowship, I'm looking at this in uh, Hebrews chapter 13, Hebrews chapter 13, I read from verse 7, it says, remember they which have the rule over you, them, it's not talking of the Jews, it's talking of the servants of God, what many of us say, them, in the plural, remember them, which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the words of God, whose face, tell me the next word there, follow, considering the end of their conversation. If you don't know about their faith, you don't know about their faithfulness, you don't know about their dedication to the will of God, the word of God, you don't, you don't know about their testimony. How do you fellowship with them? There's no fellowship. We just talk about, you know, we fellowship together if we follow the servant of God. He esteem them. Esteem them. We're looking at First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. And I'm reading here from verse 12 and verse 13. And we'll be saying, brethren, to know them, plural, not just him, not just Jesus, to know them which labor among you and over you in the Lord and admonish you and to tell me the word there, esteem them very highly, esteem the servant of God very highly. If you esteem somebody, you're not going to be looking down on them. You're not going to be playing pranks on them. You're not going to be doing anything that will provoke them or hinder their ministry. You esteem them. You love them. You love them. It's something practical. And it tells us in that verse 13 to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. So, we follow them, that's fellowship with the leader. We esteem them, that's fellowship with the leader. We love them, that's fellowship with the leader. We learn from them. We learn from them. A leader stood up to preach. 
Et le leader se lève pour dire quelque chose. On ne fait pas la Bible et dit que lorsque le Dieu monte, moi je vais l'écouter. Celui qui n'a rien à m'apprendre. Et pour ce que j'ai fait le shipping avec les leaders, on a 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 fait le shipping avec les leaders, You Nous keep on learning in Jesus' name. You never despise any leader. You never despise the servants of God. Some of the servants of God are more evangelistic than their teachers. Some of the servants of God are more of a teacher than an evangelist. Some of the servants of God are more of a pastor than a teacher. Those are different gifts and those are different skills. But the word of God says that we must learn from them. Sometimes a leader is not even Talking, you're just sitting there quietly. You learn about his humility. You learn about his conduct, his area of life. You learn about his wisdom. His wisdom. Sometimes a leader is saying, you know, getting old, and because he's getting old, he cannot run fast like you are running. But you understand, he has experience, deep experience. He's gone through many things in life. And just listening to him, not listening on the pulpit, you go to him, and then he gives you counsel, we can learn. I pray you will learn. Philippians chapter 4, and I'm reading here from verse 9. Philippians chapter 4, we're reading from verse 9. It says, Those things which he had both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. That's what they are doing. Good amen. We learn. We learn from the servants of God. And we will be the servants of God. It will be a bit of a, you know, any of the servants of God, they talk to you and they say, this is what you do. And you see from the scriptures, they'll say, no, until I hear from so and so, until I hear from, you know, the man up there. How about the leader there? How about the servant of God there? Paul was not the only apostle. And Paul was not the only leader in the early church. There were other leaders too. And we need to listen to the servants of God. And we need to obey them. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 13. And I'm reading from verse 17. Verse 17, it says, what's the first word Quel over here? I can't hear my people. Obey them that have the rule over you. And submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give account and that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. It's saying that we should obey our leaders, our descendants of God. That's the fellowship we're talking about. In fellowship, we follow them. In fellowship, we still them. In fellowship, we love them. In fellowship, we learn from them. In fellowship, we obey them. In fellowship, we walk like them. We walk with them. That is moving and making progress like them. You won't say, well, we don't understand. It's just running too fast. And let him keep on running. I can't run like that. Why does this say slow down? You have to catch up. And you have to walk with them. Walk with that servant of God. We're looking at Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 17, brethren. Be followers together of me. Yeah, now frères, Paul is now particular. Ici, and Paul is, uh, you know, Paul, Paul did not uh, shy away from the very Paul fact that God has chosen me to be a leader and a servant of God. Uh, and if he's to be a servant of God, a leader to the people, he must uh, show Alors, an example. Un and now he says, be followers together of me and mark them. He says, I'm not the only one, but I'm one of them. I'm not them. We should walk as she have us an example. That's why leaders are there. That's why the servants of God are there. Fellowship with them means we are walking like them. Yes, we stand with them. We stand with them. You stand with the leader. The leader and the servant of God is having a challenge. Well, he is 
Il est le grand dirigeant. Il est le grand homme de foi. Il peut prier. Il est le grand homme de foi. Dieu va pouvoir ses besoins. Il est le grand homme qui a fait des expériences. Nous ne savons pas le soutenir. 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 Nous ne savons pas le soutenir.
Of God, we're looking at uh, First Alors, Corinthians chapter one, premier, and I'm reading from premier, verse eleven. First Corinthians chapter one, verse uh, eleven. For it has been declared uh, unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Proper information. P, we pray for them. We pray for them. You know, some people think that leaders are so strong. We don't pray for them. Our servants of God are so strong. We don't pray for them. The sectional leaders in various areas of work are so strong. We don't need to pray for them. Of course we do. Of course we do. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 1. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. We're looking at verse 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us. Servants of God. We need prayer. Pray, pray for us, the apostles. We need prayer. Pray for us. We're sectional leaders. Pray for us. And sometimes we do our best, and what comes out is does not show that we're giving our best to the work. But all the same, pray for us. Pray, pray, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you, that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith. You can see as we look at the word of God that number one, we have fellowship with the Son. That is with the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, we have fellowship with um, the saints of God. Number three, we have fellowship with the servants of God. Now I come to divide the message to three parts. Number one, the beginning and the building up of true fellowship. The beginning and the building up of true fellowship. Point number two, the boundary and the blockages against true fellowship. There are boundaries that, uh, you know, are set in the word of God concerning in fellowship. And there are blockages to true fellowship. The boundary and the blockages against true fellowship. Number three, the backbone and the bond of true fellowship. The backbone of true fellowship and the bond of true fellowship. Number one, what's number one? 
le commencement, le commencement the beginning of the building up. You cannot build it up if you have not started it. There must be a commencement, there must be a beginning, si the beginning and the building up of true fellowship. Let's look at uh, First Corinthians again. First Corinthians chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 1, we're reading from verse 9. It says, God is faithful by whom he was called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. It says it is God himself that calls us into the fellowship of his son. How does he do that? He sends the word to us, the word of repentance. How does he do that? He sends a preacher to us, he sends a soul winner to us, and then the word reaches us, and we realize who are sinners, we realize who are dead. He sees and trespasses, and then we repent, and we call on the name of the Lord, and we are saved, and we are brought now into union with Christ, relationship with Christ, and fellowship with Christ. That is salvation. We're coming to at John chapter 17. John chapter 17. I read from verse 17. John 17 verse 17. Sanctify them through the truth. The word is true. Now the Lord Jesus Christ was praying for the people all the same. And he's praying for them to be sanctified. Why? So that, look at verse 21, that they all may be one as thou father at me. And I in thee, and that, and that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Sanctification deepens our fellowship. It, it makes our hearts more tender. It, it, it removes the atomic nature. It removes the depravity. And then fellowship becomes really deeper than what it was. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 11. Acts of the Apostles chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 15. Acts of the Apostles chapter 11. Reading from verse 15. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them. As on us at the beginning, then remembered I the words of the Lord. How that he said, John will be baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. There's the baptism of the Holy Ghost for as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? You see, before this time, there's not really a good fellowship between Peter and the house of Cornelius. It's like, well, the Lord is compelling me to go there, and I'm going there, and I'm going to preach. And he started preaching, he started preaching as a visiting preacher. He started preaching as a foreign preacher. He started preaching as somebody coming from the Jews. And these were Gentiles, and then those people received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Everything changed. Unity came. Togetherness came. Oneness came. He said, The same gift we received, the same Holy Ghost baptism we received, God has given to these people, and there was unity among them, fellowship among them. And when Peter returned to the believers in Jerusalem, and he said, What have you done? You've gone to those Gentiles, your age was then, your fellowship was then. He said, you know what? Those people are the same baptism in the Holy Ghost. What are we talking about? Salvation brings us in. Sanctification gets us deeper. The Holy Ghost baptism also aids us to have deeper and richer and the tighter fellowship together. And then after that has happened, now we build up that fellowship. It has begun already. Because we are saved, it has begun already. Because we are sanctified, it has begun and already because we are baptized in the Holy Ghost. And now we build it up, build it up, build it up. In John chapter 13. John chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 34. John chapter 13, verse 34. A new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another. Love one another. Love one another. And it's not theoretical. Practical. Practical. How do you show love? You do to others as you want them to 
don't you? You need something and you have. You don't have to say, I'm going to go to our pastor, I'm going to go to our group pastor and take permission before I can give them the thing that they need. If you are there and you add that need and another person add something to supply, you want them to come and supply that thing immediately. The same thing, we should be prompt in attending to the needs of other people. We should be prompt in attending to the challenges in the lives of other people. And sometimes we might even feel some discomfort because maybe you're tired and you want to rest and somebody is knocking at the door. What's the matter? At this time, they're knocking at my door. We're talking of fellowship now because of love. You will get up and when you get up, it's not like, okay, what do you want at this hour? What do you want at this time? You turn it around a bit while you yourself and you wanted attention at this time something must be very serious to bring this man to bring this sister at this time you attend to them it may not be comfortable for you but by the grace of god will do it it's, I said, we'll do it. He said that we love one another as I have loved you. That she also love one another. How do we love one another? As, tell me out loud. As Christ has loved us. He knows we can do it. That's why he has told us to do it. You can do it. You will do it. I said you will do it. Look at verse 35. By day shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If ye had love towards one another. Love towards one another. The foundation of true fellowship is the experience of genuine salvation. The tu dead cannot fellowship with the living. Darkness cannot fellowship with the light. Demons and Satan cannot fellowship with Christ. Cults cannot fellowship with the church. Human depravity cannot fellowship with heavenly divinity. The Canaanites cannot fellowship with the true Israelites. And sinners and backsliders cannot fellowship with saints and believers. After that beginning of the fellowship, after that beginning, that we are called to salvation, sanctification, Holy Ghost baptism. Now we move on and we love one another. We are looking at Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. And here we are reading from verse 10 and verse, uh, verse 16. In verse 10, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. Kindly affection. You are kind to people. Don't be cruel to people. See, sometimes, the way you always not people, the way we look down on them, and they feel as if they are less than human beings. But when you give them attention, when you affection it, when you show love, when you pay attention to them, and you pay attention to their needs, needs that's the fellowship the Lord is talking about, and it says, In honor, preferring one another, in honor, preferring one another. Look at something that brother, that sister can do that you cannot do. Look at something that uh, that brother is very good at that uh, you are not good at, and he might also look at you and find something you are good at that he is not good at. As we look at each other like that, and we prefer, I prefer him, and then. I give him chance. I will start in little little things. A two of us want to go out and throw the door. And I say, I will come after you. Oh, the person said, no, I will come after you. And then eventually one of us will go along. That is preferring other people. There is an opportunity. There is a chance. And we are to go for missions, for example, in our various groups. And then the is available. I want to go. He is available. He wants to go. And he, the only la chance he has in his place of work is at this time that he can go. I say, my brother, you can go. I'll go another time. And the other brother says, well, you are, you are, I think you're a better teacher than myself. And over there, you need somebody that can really teach you. And God will help you. I'll be praying and Lord with you. We give each other's chance so that the work of God will prosper in our hands together in Jesus' name. Look at verse 16. Look at verse 16. It says, be 
of the same mind one toward another. Of the same mind one toward another. There's no competition. There's no criticism. And there's no inner kind of strife or warfare with each other. Be of the same mind one toward another. Might not high things but condescend to men of no estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. I pray God will give us all that we need so that at the grace of God, Dieu, we'll serve each other. Les uns, les I said we'll serve les each les other. Les you you, you think of other people, what can I do for him that he cannot do for himself? What can I do for her that she cannot do for herself? We're looking at Galatians chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 13. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love, what do we do? Serve one another. By love, serve one another. And that means uh, you're not sitting down all the time that you know, other people are serving you. There are times they also should sit down and you are serving them. Serve one another. You gave us this, let me give this one. And you went, you kept this direction, let me come the direction. That means we're serving one another. We're helping one another. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 4 and verses 2 and 3. Ephesians chapter 4, we're looking at verses 2 and 3. It says, without newness and meekness, with long suffering, for bearing one another in love. For bearing one another in love. Now, sometimes uh, Parfois, people may be doing things they are not conscious of. Ne sont pas For example, uh, we are you know, in a fellowship and then we ask a question. question. Somebody stands up or picks the microphone. The, micro. the person teaching has not even said, uh, okay, you can answer, but you know, he, he so loves the word of God Dieu and he wants to uh, you know, say something. Ce what he says may not be the, you know, the most deep and the most significant thing, but you know, it's happy doing that, who for fear, and then another, another question, another question comes, and the same brother is, you know, raising the hand, and before we call him, he's already there, maybe it's, it's just, you know, happy that he I actually before something happened before, but now I'm in the Lord, and I'm, I'm going to give everything I have to the Lord, and temporarily, he forgot that the rest of us are there, we too want to serve the Lord, and now him, and now him, let him have his time, it's his time to be happy and to be joyful, and to be contented to contribute, to contribute like this, don't condemn Dieu. him. You don't understand why he's doing like that. You don't understand. We forbear. There are things we may not agree with. It's not, it's not sinful. It's not sinful. It's just that this is what he does at this time. And this is what she's doing at this time. And you know, sometimes there may even be a direct mistake. Like, for example, you, you know that um, somebody has uh, done something, is dressing a particular way. And you're wondering, you know, why is she dressing like that? that? Why is this like that? Why is it like that? Don't say, don't be forward. I don't just go to her and say, hey, come on, look at this. I thought you were a I don't talk like that. What happened today? If you discuss with that very well, you might understand why she's putting on that kind of dress and we forbear with one another. There are some idiosyncrasies, there are some peculiarities of people. You are patient, you are patient. And as we are patient, the Lord, there are times God will wash all those things away. And they will, but we don't allow that to bug us now. And then we cannot move forward. Thank God we are moving forward. I said we're for looking people. We're not going to allow this things to bother us. We will not destroy the work of God because of some these little, little things. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. In the bond of peace, endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit. Look at verse 31. It says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from God. 
you with all malice and be kind one to another, kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. God will give us grace. I come to point number two the boundary and the blockages against true fellowship. The boundary and the blockages against true fellowship. That means that God said the boundary and the boundary says we must honor. What kind of boundary is this? Ephesians chapter 5, we're reading from verse 11. Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 11. And have no fellowship with the full works of darkness, but rather reprove them. That's the boundary I said. And it's the command of God. This is not something you can say, no, I don't accept that. We must accept everything, the totality of the word of God. And it says, have no fellowship with the full works of darkness. But rather, reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in a secret. First Corinthians chapter 10, the boundary that the word of God has said, that God himself has said around the fellowship of the children of God. First Corinthians chapter 10, reading from verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And oh, I would not that she should have fellowship with avec les devils. Demons. That is, uh, that all those of the neighbors, they sacrifice, they do it in ignorance, perhaps, or they do it because that's their tradition. tradition. But it Mais says we must not be partakers with them, we must not share with them in those sacrifices and works of darkness. It says in verse 21, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. We must be very clear in our mind that we are not encouraging um, false religion, we are not encouraging idolatry, we are not encouraging powers of darkness or societies of darkness. In, um, First Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 11, the boundaries that God has set and the blockages against uh, true fellowship and were blocked these things away from our fellowship. It says in First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11, that now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be fornicator, covetous, an idolater, a railer, a drunkard, an extortioner was such a one de no ne not manger to avec eat. Un you see the boundary there? Is there somebody who says it's a believer? But he's living a backsliding life. He's seen for life. And he's uh, into and it's a fornication and he's not even repenting. And he's not a feeling that he's doing anything wrong or he's covetous or he's an idolater or he's a railer. You know, a bitching like this. You can, you know, get up and shout another person down and they bully on somebody. And then the ushers and the leaders try to calm him down. Leave me alone, leave me alone. You see that the way it's there's no evidence of salvation in that person's life. He says we should not encourage such people and be in fellowship with such people. It tells us in 1 John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 1, reading from verse 5. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 5, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Amen. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If we say we have fellowship with God, you know some people if you are trying to correct them about something, they say you are the one that saw it like that. I know that I am in fellowship with God. And yet you know is walking in darkness. He says, if we say we have fellowship with him, and we're walking in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If we walk in the light, as si he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. If we are walking in the light, we're living straight. We're living the normal Christian life, and uh, if there's any mistake, we'll correct the mistake. If there's any carelessness, we we'll go to the Lord in prayer, and the Lord cleanses us, and you know, gets us back on our 
Ils se disent, c'est la vie. Mais si quelqu'un est délibérément, la personne marche dans les ténèbres, la personne est incorrigible, ça c'est la vie. Mais si nous marchons dans la lumière comme il est lui-même dans la lumière, nous sommes mutuellement en communion et le sang de Jésus, son fils, nous purifie de tout péché. Vous êtes purifiés. Nous sommes purifiés. Nous n'avons pas demeuré en aucune chose de mauvais au nom de Jésus-Christ. Nous allons à l'Ancien Testament, 2 Chronicles, chapitre 19. 2 Chronicles, chapitre 19. Nous allons à l'Ancien 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 j'ai eu le prophète Anani, le prophète Allah au devant de lui, c'est-à-dire Josaphat, et il dit au roi Josaphat, tu as qu'un secourir le méchant et impie, ceux qui haïssent l'éternel, les gens qui sont impies, les gens qui sont injustes, pécheurs, ne faut pas les aider, on peut leur donner de la nourriture, de l'eau, certaines choses, mais on ne les amène pas en communion, comme tu veux, mais tu es mon frère, tu es ma soeur, mon ami ira avec ton ami, mais tu veux, tu veux qu'on secourit le méchant et impie, ceux qui haïssent l'éternel, à cause de cela, l'éternel est irrité contre toi. Le jugement s'est abattu sur Josaphat parce qu'il était en communion avec Akab. Vous ne serez pas en communion avec les Cananiens. Alors, si vous ne vous repentez pas pour tout le monde, vous ne vous repentez pas pour tout le monde. Vous ne vous repentez pas pour tout le monde. Vous ne vous repentez pas pour tout le monde. Psalm 94, verse 20, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship of thee, which frames with Shiva by a law. There are people that sit on the judgment seat. There are people that make laws, and the laws have to destroy the people of God, and they have to destroy the way and the gospel, the grace of God. They sit on the throne, and on the throne of authority, and they are doing evil, and they are making laws that will destroy the The work of God, you're not being fellowship with such people. No matter the consequences of the cause, he says, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frames mischief by the law? They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous. They are the throne. Ils sont en autorité, ils sont sur le trône. Ils se rassemblent contre la vie du Dieu. Et ils condamnent le sang innocent. Vous n'aurez pas de communion avec de tels au nom de Jésus-Christ. Le vrai disciple est une âme sauvée, un véritable disciple de Christ. Il ne peut pas, il n'aura pas la communion, il ne va pas garder la communion avec une personne, ni avec un groupe de personnes, ni avec une assemblée dans le Great to see. That is a little Bible, a little tradition, a little occultism. You will not have fellowship with all that. Or with the people that are going with fornication, or adultery, or hypocrisy, or apostasy, or false doctrine, or occultism, or wickedness, or darkness in any way. The Lord will keep us safe and sound in the will of God, in the word of God, in Jesus' name. Point number three now, the backbone. L'épine dorsale et le lien d'une vraie communion. L'épine dorsale et le lien d'une vraie communion. Comment we have real fellowship together? The word of God makes us understand. When we talk of the backbone, we understand when a man is standing, when a woman is standing, any human being. The the bones you have, the bone structure you have at your back that keeps you straight. You can stand like this. That's the backbone. If the backbone is not there and the all the other parts are there, you cannot stand. You cannot live like a real man, like a real human being. But when the backbone is simply the same thing with fellowship. When the backbone is in place, then you are able to do everything you ought to do. We're looking at Leviticus chapter 6. 
les Viticos chapter 6, the backbone of fellowship. La fellowship in the family as a backbone, fellowship in the flock of God as a backbone, fellowship in society as a backbone, fellowship in our places of work as a backbone, fellowship anywhere in our local churches, in our district churches, in our groups of churches, in our local community, in our state, fellowship as a backbone. We're looking at Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 2. If a soul sin and commit a trespass against the Lord and lie to his neighbor in that which was delivered him to keep or in fellowship. You see that somebody has been in fellowship with another person, has been in fellowship with the assembly of the people of God and now he says he's done something wrong in fellowship or in his thing taken away by violence or has deceived his neighbor or has found that which was lost and lies concerning it and swears falsely in any of all these that he might do sin therein. Then it shall be because he has sinned and is guilty that he shall restore that which he should violently awake and the sin which he has deceitfully gotten or that which was delivered him to keep or the lost thing which he found. And all 24, that about la chose de quelqu'un sur laquelle il a fait il un faux serment, il la restituera à son entier, il ajoutera un cinquième et il la remettra à son propriétaire le jour même où il offrira son sacrifice de culpabilité. Le message est très clair. Very clear. Nous sommes en communion and because parce qu'on se fie à l'autre. Tu as confessé à moi, j'ai confessé à toi et alors on va parce qu'on est dans la communion and now, et maintenant at the time au temps de la you stole something from the fellowship tu at the time of temptation you did something tu as fait quelque chose et tu as acheté and you didn't stand according to the word of God and it's not just fellowship fellowship if we're going to keep the fellowship here is the backbone you will make restitution the things you have stolen you will restore the lies you have told you will correct the lie and the things you did to restore the fellowship to destroy the fellowship we are going to correct that thing. That's what the Old Testament is telling us. And that's the Bible. Bible. And Jesus said the same thing in Matthew chapter 5. Uh, in Matthew chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 5, 23. 23. You know, if somebody si doesn't want to do this, there's no evidence of salvation. When you are saved, when you are a real child of God, and you know you've you stolen something, or you have sleep, you've stolen something, or you've done something that you shouldn't have done, you make correction, you make restitution. If you have grace, it will be done. If you are not doing it, it's because there's no grace. You don't want to hear about correction. You don't want to hear about restitution. You don't want to hear about righteousness. It's because there's no grace. If the grace of God is there, you have prayed and God has forgiven you. And things are totally different now. And you don't have the mind of continuing to do that wrong thing. Then you make restitution. Matthew chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 23. Matthieu 5, verset 23, « Therefore, if thou bring thy si donc, gift to the altar, and bear a membrace that thy brother has, or it gives thee, it may be like, you know, you're a woman, and then you're going to offer your service, ton, ton your singing service, to the Lord, ton and then you remember that your fellowship at home is not right. Your husband is not happy, and your husband is not just there saying, the church does not know this one, and your husband is not happy, 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 and your Correct that Le thing with your husband. De, de you have la humility Alors, and you have tenderness. Tu, tu auras, and then you go to your husband, I'm sorry about uh, this. I don't know what came of me that I did that. And then everything is set up. Then you can go on and offer to give to for the people that you walk anyhow and talk anyhow and act anyhow. And they don't know that anybody is offended or anybody is being hurt. And they keep on doing the evil thing they're doing. And they think that it doesn't matter what matters is being given and my skin. 
qui a porté ses mon talent, mon don, je veux l'offrir. Ce n'est pas le christianisme. Dans la communion, on corrige ce qui est mauvais et on fait la rétention. Verset 23, si tu dis donc que tu présentes ton offrande à l'autel et que là tu te souviens que ton frère a quelque chose contre toi, laisse-la ton offrande devant l'autel. Il va d'abord te réconcilier avec ton frère, puis viens présenter ton offrande. La restitution est nécessaire. On va à Luc, Luc 17, verset 3. Luc 17, verset 3. It says, take it to yourself, if thy brother trespasses against thee, le And if you repent, forgive him, you see there, it says in a fellowship, relationship together, you might offend your brother, you might offend your sister, and it says, take it to yourself, if thy brother trespasses against thee. Il ne faut pas malice, garder la rancune, il ne faut him. pas que tu ne veux pas parler, si je parle now, maintenant, il ne va pas me comprendre, on va, va dire que je me plains, on va dire que c'est moi qui ai le problème, chaque fois qu'il se plaint, chaque fois qu'il parle. Donc, je vais me dire que je ne peux pas le faire. Que si tu vas garder la communion, voici l'épine dorsale de la communion. Reprends-le, dis-lui, ceci est mauvais. Comment tu peux faire comme ça Dis-lui, ce n'est pas la bonne fois. Dis-lui, un point ne va pas agir de cette manière. Dis-lui, tu m'as blessé, tu ne dois pas me faire ceci. Et il se repent, il accuse, il y a des gens qui parlent de pardon, pardon, pardon. Ils ne comprennent pas l'épine dorsale de la communauté. Il appelle communion. Quelqu'un a fait quelque chose de mal, il faut pardonner sans repentance. La personne... Non, fait la chose en pardon, ça ne fait pas de sens. La chose ne te repart que la Bible. La personne nous fait mal, je te pardonne, ça ne fait pas de sens. Ce n'est pas la Bible. Prenez garde à vous-même, si ton frère a péché, reprends-le. Et s'il se repart, pardonne-lui. Verset 4 dit, et s'il a péché contre toi, dites-le moi, sept fois dans un jour, et que, qu'est-ce qui suit et que cette fois, Seven il revient à toi, again, to disant, saying, je me repens. C'est très important, c'est très important. important. Dans la communion, il faut qu'il ait la repentance. On ne peut pas continuer à piéger les gens à tout moment et dire que, say, après well, tout, on est chrétien, il faut me pardonner. Et que tu chiffres les gens, on est chrétien, pardonne-moi. Et on les taquine, ils sont chrétiens, pardonne-moi. Tu fais les affaires, tu es avec eux, tu enseignes dans leur école et tu fais des choses mauvaises, après tu en es chrétien, il faut me pardonner. Tu continues de faire ce qui est mauvais, ce n'est pas la communion. Tu fais le mal. Il faut que si la personne fait le mal, elle vient à toi cette fois, et il dit que, frère, je ne sais pas pourquoi je suis comme ça. C'est que je suis désolé, viens qu'on fait le mal. Tu ne dois pas faire ceci-là. Regarde ce que j'ai fait. Et tu vois la repentance authentique de la personne qui te pardonne lui. Je prie que Dieu te donne la compréhension au nom de Jésus. Nous sommes à James, Jacques, chapitre 5, verset 16. Verset 16. Il y a des gens qui soulignent la prière, la prière, la prière. Jean 16, Jean 5, 16. Confessez donc vos péchés les uns aux autres. Et priez les uns pour les autres afin que vous soyez guéris. La prière fait vente du juste à une grande efficacité. Vous regardez ici, il y a des temps, je regarde quelqu'un, et la personne a fait quelque chose de mauvais, et la personne sait que, 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 que ce qu'ils ont fait, que Dieu a su ça. Il sait que ceci est mauvais. La Bible a dit, confessez, donc vous péchez les uns aux autres. Et puis après, ils vont venir à quelqu'un, frère, un pasteur, j'ai besoin de prière. J'ai réellement de prière. J'ai réellement besoin de prière. Pasteur, il faut se Just pray for me. Just pray for me. Qu'est-ce que tu cherches? Prie, 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 prie pour moi. Il faut prier pour moi. Ils voudraient que la prière la couvre le mal. Les choses mauvaises qu'ils font. Ils veulent que tu fermes les yeux sur cela. Mais si on ferme les yeux sur cela, cela va te blesser. Tu ne peux pas aller au ciel sans la sanctification. Personne ne verra le Seigneur. Alors si tu fais quelque chose que tu fais, c'est mauvais et tu couvres cela avec la prière et tu fais quelque chose. Ce qui est mauvais, et tu as peur, tu vas courir vers le pasteur. Le pasteur, prie pour moi. Ce n'est pas la 
Bible. La Bible a dit confessez donc vos péchés les uns aux autres après la confession de la repentance et priez l'un pour l'autre et vous serez guéris. Paul disait aux Corinthiens, deuxième Corinthiens, chapitre 12, deuxième Corinthiens 12, nous lisons le verset 20. Ici, il dit nous en verset 20, il dit je crains de ne pas vous trouver à mon arrivée tel que je voudrais et d'être moi-même trouvé par vous tel que vous ne voudrez pas. Je crains de trouver des querelles, de la jalousie, des animosités, des cabales, des médisances, des calomnies, de l'orgueil, des troubles. Je crains qu'à mon arrivée, mon Dieu ne me mine de, de nouveau à votre sujet et que je n'ai à pleurer sur plusieurs à ceux qui ont péché précédemment et qui ne se sont pas repentis de l'impureté, de l'impudicité et des dissolutions auxquelles ils se sont livrés. Ça, c'est une commune vide. Seulement, il faut nous aimer. Oui, je t'aime. C'est pourquoi je t'enseigne la parole de Dieu. C'est pourquoi je passe. Pourquoi tu ne fais pas ça Oui, je donne ma vie, mon sang. C'est ce que la poste Paul dit. Mais tu sais, la la commune ne peut pas continuer quand je viens à toi et là, et je vais je vais euh, et je vais corriger et ceux qui ont fait le mal et qui ne se sont pas, et qui ne se sont pas repentis la repentance est très importante dans la communion Marc, Marc chapitre 9, chapitre 9, 9 50. 50. Marc 9, verset 50. Marc 9, 50. Le sel est une bonne chose, mais si le sel devient sa saveur, avec quoi la saisonnerez-vous Ayez du sel en vous-même. Dites-moi le reste. Dites-moi au revoir. Et soyez en paix les uns avec les autres. De toute manière, de toute façon, de toute façon, gardons la paix dans l'assemblée des enfants de Dieu. Il y a la paix. Romains, au chapitre 12, verset 18. Et s'il est possible, autant que cela dépend de vous, Romains, et... Oui, s'il est possible, tant que cela dépend de vous, soyez en paix avec tous les hommes. Ne vous vengez point vous-même, bien aimé, mais laissez agir la colère, car il est écrit à moi la vengeance, à moi la rétribution, dit le Seigneur. Mais si ton ennemi a faim, donne-lui à manger, s'il a soif, donne-lui à boire, car en agissant ainsi, ce sont des charbons à dents que tu as marché sur sa tête. Ne te laisse pas vaincre par le mal, ou pas commencer à te bagarrer avec lui, ne te laisse pas vaincre par le mal, mais sur Monte comment, sur monte le mal comment, pas le bien. Dieu nous donnera la sagesse. Deuxième Corinthiens 13, verset 11. Deuxième Corinthiens 11, verset 11. Au reste, frère, soyez dans la joie. Perfectionnez-vous. Vous serez parfait. Vous serez parfait. Vous serez parfait. Consolez-vous, ayez un même esprit. Est-ce qu'on peut avoir un même esprit Est-ce qu'on peut prier ensemble Est-ce qu'on peut aller à la même direction Est-ce qu'on peut être unis Nous le sommes déjà au nom de Jésus-Christ. Vivez en paix. Et le Dieu d'amour et de paix sera avec vous. Philippiens 4, Philippiens 4, nous lisons le verset 7, Philippiens 4, nous lisons le verset 7, In the seven, it tells us, dit, look at verse 7 here, it says, and the peace of Dieu, God, peace of God, look at the last line le dernier, in verse 9, la and the God ligne, of au verset peace, 9, you see that, in verse 7, the peace of God, and in the verse 9, the God of peace, peace. it says, the peace of God will be with you, and the God of peace will be with you, there in the middle, see what it's saying, I'm going to read everything now, the peace of God, which passes all of us, intelligence gardera vos cœurs et vos pensées en Jésus-Christ. Au reste, frère, voyez ce qui se passe dans la communion, que ce qui est vrai, ce qui est honorable, ce qui est juste, ce qui est pur, tout ce qui est aimable, tout ce qui mérite l'approbation, ce qui est vertueux et digne de louange, soit l'objet de vos pensées. N'ayez pas des pensées négatives, 
Christ, which you have both learned and received and heard and seen with you, and the God of peace shall be with you. That peace that surpasses every knowledge, every understanding will be in your heart, will be in your family, will be among your children, will be in your local church, will be in your church of the Lord Jesus' name. We're coming to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. The very God of peace, the God of peace, sanctify you all. I thought you would say, Amen. Amen. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved, be blessed unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can God do it? Celui qui vous a appelé infidèle, et c'est lui qui le fera. Il nous gagnera unis. And everything that blocks the unity that goes against unity and fellowship, it will take away from our heart and from our families and from our churches in Jesus' name. And the God of peace will be with you. He will be with us all. Everything we need to do, everything we need to be, so that this peace will reign in our hearts and our lives, it will do it even from tonight to start in Jesus' name. Celui qui vous a appelé infidèle, et c'est lui qui le fera. Tenons-nous debout et parlons au Seigneur dans la prière. Amenons tout ce que nous avons appris au Seigneur dans la prière. Il est le Dieu de paix, il nous accordera la paix. Amenez tout au Seigneur en prière. Que vous soyez un agent d'unité, un agent de communion. And the fellowship of the children of God will be better because you are part of us.